Just take off the skin. Welcome to part one of our latest trip to New Caledonia. We were here for the Inter-Pacific Spearfishing Champs. Most of our days were spent scouting the different areas for the competition, but we also got in some amazing spearfishing inside and outside the lagoon. In part one, we're going to explore on the interior of the reef, diving vast areas of sand with small coral bombies. This is some of my favorite spearfishing, as it requires lots of interesting techniques and is beautiful diving. We got on some really nice country here, finding small bits of broken coral out on the sand. The interesting thing about diving on these inner lagoons is you don't tend to find too much diving the exposed reef where you can see. You need to find these hidden gems sitting out on the sand. My first dive on the spot was really exciting. Three of the common sand species we see here, Spangled Emperor, Jobfish, and Robinson Seabree. This Robinson Seabree was the biggest of all of them and made an easy shot. I'm using my Weddy Viper 120 spear gun, which normally is quite short for diving these tropical areas as you tend to take long shots. This became obvious straight away when I thought that fish wasn't that far away, but the spear only just penetrating through. The visibility was amazing here, so it makes the fish look like they're closer than what they are. It's super common when you get to the tropics that you end up taking lots of long shots. As you can see, the conditions were amazing above the water too. Flat, calm, and we we're all spread out over this broken ground. Yo, it's good over here, a lot of fish. Heading down for my second dive, I'd spin as I go down to try and locate where all those schooling fish were. Although the water's clear, all those species camouflage really, really well on the white sand. I'm in about 20 meters of water, so it's not particularly deep. It's so important that I'm facing the correct way as soon as I hit the bottom. I need to make slow and calm movements so I'm not to alert too many fish around me. Quick and sharp movements will spook these fish and they won't come into range. Again, the same three species. We've got more jobfish this time, Robinson Seabreen, and lots of Spangled Emperor. Second on the list is the jobfish. But again with my 120, you can tell with the delay, it's a really, really long shot. I didn't feel like the fish was gonna come any closer, and I'm still getting my eye in with the distances in this clear water. The one good thing is most of the surrounding area is all sand, so there's not much for this jobfish to tangle on. Without actually realizing, Dwayne makes a quick dive and races down to get a second shot in to ensure that I secure the fish.
There's a lot of fish down there when you when you get to the bottom. There's loads of spangled bottle blog and the jobbies. Rock there, so you don't see them until you get to the bottom, eh? And they all come in. After thanking Dwayne for helping me land this job fish, I soon realized that I needed my longer spear gun. So I headed back to the boat, unloaded my 120 to chuck that back in and grab my 130 to see if that would help a bit more with the range. A lot of the local spear fishermen here will use guns between 130 centimeters and 140 centimeters when hunting these sand species. I grab another float boat for good measure to keep the fish in, as sharks are common issues here. There are pros and cons to me going to this longer spear gun. I'm far more used to using a 120cm gun back here in New Zealand. So going to a longer gun, sometimes it can mess with your aiming. I still take a really long shot on this purple cod. Luckily I managed to clip it, but I'm still making those same mistakes as I am with a 120, taking shots at these fish from too far away. Being the first day diving here, it does take me a little bit of time to really get used to the distances. Certainly a successful first dive, finding some amazing fish in great, great conditions. This purple cob was destined for dinner and was absolutely delicious. On our next trip out into the inner lagoon, we got one of the locals' best sparrows, Philippe, to come with us. You can see he's telling me to get into the water. He's got his handheld GPS and he's got lots of different bombies marked all over the massive lagoon in Numea. It's so important to find these isolated bombies out on the sand. Diving a lot of the reef edge on the inner lagoon, you don't tend to see too many good fish. They all live way out on the sand on remote small rocks.
I spotted a coral trout. Again, one of the most beautiful eating fish in the ocean. Certainly one of my favorites. There's a small surgeon fish that I'm trying to spear for fish identification. But one of the other divers makes a dive and spears it before I can get close to it. But without realizing this has a positive consequence. Mm -hmm. Another big Robinson Seabring comes in to inspect. And doesn't really realize that I'm hiding behind this bit of reef. I try and position myself in an area where I can try and attract this fish in. They respond really well to slow movements, sand, and a bit of scratching of the reef. These fish are beautiful eating. They tasted so, so similar to our boar fish here in New Zealand. A nice thick white fillet. Again, Dwayne being one of the best dive buddies, following me up from my dive as he noticed I'd been down there for a while. Lying a suitable distance away from the rocky bombies tends to work well. The fish feel a lot more calm and they don't tend to spook off and I'm able to sort of gauge what different species are out in front of me. It can be so tricky to assess the situation when you're used to our temperate water species. Sometimes my reactions are not quite quick enough on what I'm seeing. Another great eating fish, a steephead parrotfish. Mm -hmm. 
big shark enters the fray, so it's best to get these fish out of the water. We move to another bommie out on the sand that Philippe has marked. I did my best to stay close to him so I could learn from him and see what sort of techniques he was using. In this case, he wanted big chunks of burley to be sitting on the bottom, but down current from the bommie, which seemed quite foreign to me. He said this was a good way to attract certain sand species. I make my dive away from the bommie, and as it turns out, the down current side of the rocks were normally actually the best for fish. This contradicts what we do in New Zealand, but I was happy to adapt to the situation. Sure enough, some Spangled Emperor come in to inspect the burley. These are one of the more tricky fish out on the sand here. They tend to move a lot and can get very cagey very quick. Often you might only get one chance at the school. I had resorted back to my 120cm gun as I felt more comfortable with my shooting and was getting my distances much, much better. It was great to watch the top divers in action here in New Caledonia. I could learn so much from them as their techniques and the way they dived was very, very different to me. As a sparrow, if you're trying to improve, it does pay to watch how other people do things. Spearfishing is a sport that you never quite master. So it always pays to be open to new ideas. The school of big spangled emperor were obviously enticed by the coral trout shot on the previous dive. 
see how they move in, but often I'm only gonna get one chance. I take a long shot, but these fish don't tear so bad. So I know the flopper should hold well. All these different sand species are incredible looking fish, very, very beautiful, and are really enjoyable to hunt and eat. I'm not sure I'd ever get sick of diving this inner lagoon stuff in clear water. The reflection up off the sand makes the whole area look so beautiful. And there's so many different species to learn how to hunt. I always do my best to lie flat on the bottom. The higher you are up off the bottom, often you'll be more intimidating to the fish around you. Keep your spear gun low and keep yourself a real narrow target. And also be aware of your surroundings. In comes this beautiful Robinson Seabream, or as they call them there, Bossu Blanc. And my shooting is certainly getting much, much better, taking better shots on these fish. That signals the end of the day, as rather than having individual fish limits like we have in New Zealand, they have a combined catch limit of 40 kgs of reef fish per day on a boat. It doesn't matter how many people you have, and it doesn't matter how many different species. So Jackson, this fish is good. Yeah. Another one just there, another boss. Do you, with a bommy, the, the water is coming this way, you always dive here. Face in, in, into the current. The bommy here, you dive here. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. In New Zealand, the opposite. Oh, really? Behind the rock, no good. Always on front. This was such a great experience because I got to learn so much. But stay with us, part two's coming soon when we head on the outside of the reef and see some amazing, amazing species. <laughs> it's a big, it's big man, it's a big fish.